worship you, Lord Jesus. Uh, for tuning in. Thank you guys for uh, tuning in for our services last week. Uh, those of you who are with us on Sunday, thank you. Uh, you know, for the comments and for the likes and shares, and we hope that you are blessed. Uh, we thank the Lord for the good word that he gave us about the Holy Spirit. And, uh, you know, and this week, you know, it's just a week of basking in his presence and enjoying enjoying his peace. We thank you guys for <clears throat> always tuning in uh, for the Wisdom Monday, and we're back again with the Wisdom Monday. We thank you guys for, you know, tuning in for, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday for the teaching series and the Power Pack Friday praise and worship. Uh, we thank you guys for, you know, always being there and uh, we pray that you will be blessed and, uh, you know, we thank you all of you who have contributed to this ministry in terms of money and, uh, you know, we've bought a few things. We've been able to uh, improve on our services so that we can serve the Lord and serve you guys better. Uh, you know, we be, the Lord God is a God of excellence, and we believe that um, in this generation, uh, we are going to serve God with excellence. Amen? Uh, because he's an excellent God, and where he is, he's excellent. And the Bible says, as he is, so are we. So if he's an excellent God, then we believe in serving the Lord with all excellence. And so we thank God for that. Uh, last time, you know, we were talking about dreams. Uh, talking about, the, you, you know, if I remember, and if you remember from where we were, uh, we talked about that the dreams God gives, okay? The dreams that God gives are boastful. Mm -hmm. And so because they are boastful, you should never leave as a servant. Uh -huh. It's important. It, it doesn't mean that you should be boastful. But it it, 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 it it does not call for a lifestyle of a servant, you know, a mentality. Um, how can I explain it? Because in the Bible it says uh, in Ecclesiastes that woe to the land when its king is a servant. So that means there are certain positions that we are in or that we are going to be in that require us to think like noble people. It doesn't call for an expensive lifestyle. It doesn't call for people worshiping you on the feet. You know, uh, I spoke of something and I said that a lion doesn't think it's the king of the beasts according to its size and according to the size of other beasts. It, it, it thinks like that because that's, that's its attitude. That's its attitude, its mentality. When it sees other animals, it sees prey naturally. And so because it sees them as prey, they also see it as a parasite. You know, they see it as the eater. So it, it, they are frightened by it, whether big or small. They are all frightened by the lion because of its mentality. Amen. And so that's what it, the Bible calls for in terms of uh, uh, that scripture that we you know, what the land where the, the king of, where its king has a mentality of his servant. Okay. Jesus was a servant leader, but he was not at any time at the mercy of people. Even in his humility, he was never at the mercy of the opinion of others. He was never at the mercy of the, of the thoughts uh, and of what people thought about his ministry, about his journey, you know, of what, you know, he was never thought for. Like a, a servant is thought for. If a servant is in the house, they think for them, they give them food, they decide when to eat and when not to eat. They are thoughtful. They are not independent in their thinking. They are always thoughtful. And so when you have someone like that in a position of power and leadership, there are people who are going to be people pleasers. They are going to be people pleasers because they are afraid of... of, of <coughs> Of 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 they 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 are they are afraid of confrontation. They are afraid of 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 of, of stepping on other people uh, on other people's toes for the right cause. Okay, so this this doesn't mean that you know we should go on and be boastful and step on everyone. Said no 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 no. But people should not waver you, because the Bible says that the fear of man is a snare. Mm -hmm. The fear of man, the fear of men. The Message version says that the fear of the opinions of men is a snare, okay? So servants are ruled by the opinions of men. 
you know, your boss has your opinion over you. You should do this. This is the time you should come to work. This is the da da la 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 something like that. You get so when you have that mentality in your life, you are not going to get anywhere. And woo to your dream, woo to your ministry, woo to your your company, woo to your group, woo to anything that you come up with because you have that mentality. You're thoughtful. You allow the public to think for you. You are subject to public perception. We are called to be rebels in this world. Yeah, we are called to be rebels. We are not called to move according to the precepts of this world, but opposite them. So don't be afraid to stand out. When God has given you an idea that is out of this world, don't be afraid to stand on it and own it. Okay? It might be uncertain because no one has gone that way before. Some of you, the dreams that you have, no one has attempted to. Or even the people that have attempted to go that way have failed. But that doesn't mean that that's the wrong way. Amen. We are all built. We are all built for different ways in life. And so, when a human being, when a, you know, a, a, you know, a, a young person begins to be subject to the opinions of men, they will never get anywhere. They will keep you in a box. That that's what it means to be in a box, because society has created a box around us, and yet it has created a, 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 some kind of shades through which we look at the world. Okay, and yet God is far above that. You know, God has, God is in is internal. God is internal, and the ideas that He has are not even close to this generation. They are for generations and generations, even in the life to come, even in the new heaven and in the new earth. So that's why people who are moved by Him, people who are subject to Him, are not limited. <laughs> so you know they are not limited or by doors or by countries or by laws they are not limited because they are of, they, are, they have tapped into a power of the age to come they're not in this age they live in this age but the power that they, that drives them is of the age to come that's why they if if a person has uh, really concentrated and and sought god they can come up with ideas in any field that have not been done before it is possible how Jacob came up with an idea of, 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 his, of his cattle feeding while looking at a certain color and you know, the, the, you know, uh, the, 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 the offsprings of, those of, 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 of his animals were like that color. It, has, it hadn't been done in his generation and uh, you know, we don't know where he got that idea from, but it worked. Amen. So when you're subject to the opinions of men, when you're subject to the opinions of man, you will not move out of the boat. Which brings us to our scripture today that I want to talk about. Um, Apostle uh, said, you know, sent uh, to us a word of wisdom in our WhatsApp group, and he says that a person who never made a mistake is one who never tried anything new. Okay, so the biggest hindrance to moving out, to launching out, is the fear of mistakes. Okay, it is the fear of mistakes. Because we fear to fail, that's why we are trapped. When you look at life from an area of view, you'll find that even mistakes work for the good. When you look at God's point of view, you'll find that even mistakes work for the good for our good on our journey on our you know uh, experiences in our career mistakes some decisions that you made and you thought they were mistakes but there are the reason there are the reason as to why you you're in that place you know because of you know something that you made irrationally some it might have seemed like a mistake at that time but you know later on you're like man i'm glad i did that it was a mistake at the time, but years later, it turned out to be for your good. So the fear of mistakes, the fear of mistakes, the fear of man, to, to, to offend man, to, 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 to be so different from him, that is the biggest hindrance to our dreams. Okay, So let's look at a very interesting story here. 
you know, this is for all of us who are launching out, for all of us who have business ideas, for all of us who have uh, minis mi uh, you know, uh, ministry plans and all that. Peter is going to give us uh, a very good lesson today. And it's, uh, it's in Matthew chapter 14, verse 29. Uh, uh, it says, let me read it. Matthew chapter 14, verse 29. He says, he said, come, so Peter got out of the boat and walked on water. And he came toward Jesus. So the, uh, the disciples were in a boat and, and, and Jesus was on the other end. So he comes walking towards them, just a summary. He comes walking towards them and he calls them. He calls Peter, actually. He calls Peter. You know, Peter looks at him and says, is that you? If it's you, call me. And then he calls him. So Peter was with a group of people. Now the boat can 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 represent your society, your family, your clan, the people you went to school with, your generation. You guys are in the boat, and Jesus is outside it. Okay, <laughs> Jesus is calling you on the other side, <clears throat> and what he's calling you to do has never been done before. You're going to be set apart from your generation, from your clan, from your family. You're going to be set apart from, from your church, you know, from the people that you be with. You're going to stand out and be different. But where he's calling you is scary. You know, God provides a way, but, every, uh, but, but sometimes his ways are scary. His ideas are scary. They are too big. They are scary. They are bigger than your business, your, than, than, than your ideas, than your, your education, than your account. They are bigger than, than, than your, 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 your comprehension. Or your, your, uh, they are bigger than the opinions of your friends. They are bigger than the opinions you know, of, of, of your parents. They are bigger than the, the opinions of your, your clan members and, and, and your whole family lineage. They are bigger than them. So the boat where Peter is with his fellow disciples, they believe in Jesus and they trust in him. But they are in a boat. And Jesus is over there. He's calling him to reach him there. And where he is going, he has never, his feet has, have, had never traded on. He had never walked on water. It had never been seen in his, in, in his day. There is nothing that had ever happened like that. And even today, apart from Jesus, Peter still stands as the second, as, as, as actually the, the, you know, the second human being to walk on water, even up to today. So what he did separated him from, for generations to come. For generations to come. That's what a dream that's from God does to you. Some of you young people are in a place of uncertainty. You're in a place... You have, God has spoken to you big things, but you're wondering, you're like Mary are saying, how can this be possible? Remember, Jesus is on the other side. Your generation, your church members, your friends, they're in the boat, your family, your clan, that's what the boat represents. And he has singled you out. Uh -huh. So he says, Yes, he says that, come to me. A second. Yes, thank you. He says, come to me. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water, and he came toward Jesus. So there is always that first step. There's always that first step that we take. That's very simple. But it's not the end of the journey where you're going, I want you to keep this in mind, that Peter and his friends were in a boat. Peter and his friends were in a boat. Mm -hmm. Being in the boat means that they were in, in, in a box. Maybe it's your school, your workplace. It's, it might be, you know, your home. It might be your region, your, your district, your, 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 your thinking. And an idea comes so, an idea comes and it's so different from what you've been thinking about. But, you know, that's where God is calling you. And there is a fire that he has ignited in your heart. But you're scared. So he says, come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and he came. But when he perceived and felt the strong wind, he was frightened. And as he began to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me from death. 
Instantly, Jesus reached out his hand and caught and held him, saying to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? So, Peter walks out. He walks out of the generation. He walks out of, of the family. He walks out of the, you know, the norm of the day. He walks out of, of his family. He walks out of, of, of his, his, his school and, and his job. He leaves the group of company, the, 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 the company that he was with and how they think the same. Because these were disciples and they always thought the same. You know, they were always on the same level of understanding. And this is when this Peter started to be separated from his fellow disciples, actually. This is when he started to stand out. When he did something different from his disciples, that's why Jesus, that's why Jesus chose him to be the rock of the church. He says, on this rock I'll build. You know, it was because of Peter's, uh, um, you know, understanding and, 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 and perception that that scripture is there in the Bible. So he was different from his people. You know, Jesus asked them, what do you think? What, who do you think I am? And, you know, they said Elijah. Uh, some of them said you're Elijah. Some of them said, you know, you're, you're a prophet and stuff like that. You're a teacher. And Peter said, Peter stood out. He was different. Actually, from this moment on, you would see Peter's life being separated from his fellow disciples. He was a class apart. Because of this, because of what he did, he traded more. You know, a leader is always supposed to go further than the people he leads. He's supposed to know more than the people he leads. He's supposed to pray more than the people he leads. He's supposed to see God more. He's supposed to understand that more than the people he leads. And this is what qualified Peter to be the head of those disciples, even after Jesus' departure. Because of this thing that he did, even up to today, he's still looked at as a rock because of this step that he took. So that dream that you have is going to set you apart for generations to come. That vision, that, that, that idea, it has not been done before. You might not even know how it will And Peter stepped out and he didn't know. He didn't know. Even when he failed, at least he was a step ahead of his fellow disciples. He got out of that group. He got out of that, 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 that thinking, that generation, that, that, that perception that people have about you know, our business ideas and this is what you're supposed to No, he did something totally different and it set him apart. That's what sets you apart. When you're moving in the same direction, you cannot be noticed. When you're a group of people moving in the same direction, but you notice someone who is moving alone. Someone who's moving the opposite direction is easily noticeable. That's what sets you apart. You stand out. Stand out. So this is what made Peter stand out. So when he perceived and felt the strong wind, he was frightened. So I want to talk about that strong wind that comes for a minute. You know, there, oh, we all have that strong wind that comes. But remember, anything to defeat, anything that will overcome you must first get to your spirit. The Bible, there's a reason as to why the Bible used the word perceive. When he perceived it, to perceive is something dif uh, more deeper than, than just to feel it. It's, it's something more deeper than, than just to look at it and see the wind and notice it. It, it is deeper than noticing. It's accepting. It is, to perceive is to comprehend and understand and subject to whatever that you or whatever you you have whatever information you subject your mind to 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 to, to whatever information that you've received so we might have a lot of distractions a lot of scary things on this journey things that will try to scare us back in the boat but do not let it get into your spirit the bible says that the wise man listens to every word but he sifts and weighs every word. He sifts and weighs every word. Every word. Every word. You might have very many contradicting opinions about your dream, about, about your, your, your purpose, and people might tell you, you know what, you know, no one has ever gone that way and never succeeded. You know, uh, you know, you know, marriage is hard. You know, see, if you marry someone like this and someone like that, you know, according to experience, you know, according, you know, you might receive all, all kinds of voices, but once you have received the calling from God, 
you can still move. So, even when he calls you, it doesn't stop those contradicting voices from coming in. But when they come, you cannot avoid hearing them, but you can avoid perceiving them. Because when you perceive and it enters your spirit, you start to sink. When something enters your spirit, you start to sink. That's why the Bible says that, you know, uh, 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 a man with an un uncontrolled spirit is like a city without walls. Anything can come in and, you know, defeat you and put you down and launch there. So you must be on guard. They might take away your house. You know, you might start working this journey and you lose your house, you lose your jobs, you lose ev everything. But do not let all that get into your spirit. Because as long as your spirit is still moving and still looking at Jesus, and you shut off every other distraction and, 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 and every, every uh, contradicting voices from the society, from your school, from, uh, uh, you know, from the, uh, what people say about them, you know, what rich people have said about this and uh, blah, 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 and stuff like that. This is a bad business. This is a good business. All those things, first put them in the trash. That idea that God has put in you, you're a young person, maybe the idea that God has put in you is not in the professional world. Maybe it's in arts. Maybe it's in music. Huh? Maybe it's in, 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 in crafts. Maybe it's in, in, in social media. Maybe it's in influencing. Maybe it's, I don't know. Like whatever that God has given you, be strong. Be strong. Guard your spirit. Because once you perceive the fear, once you perceive it, once you perceive the waves, once you perceive the wind, you will start to sink. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, be strong. Be a lion. Be as bold as a lion. I mean, it's uncertain. We don't know the journey from A to Z, but be strong. Whatever comes out, we shall defeat it. We are born rebels. We are born conquerors. We are not born to, to follow you know, what the world follows. We, 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 were, we were born to rebel against uh, the worldly culture and, and the evil perceptions. Eh? Amen. And the evil perceptions of this world. Who says that you can't do this? When God has said, who says that you can't? <laughs> who says what is man that you should be afraid of him? What is man? The Bible says man is but smoke, just smoke that is blown away tomorrow. Like grass that withers, his life will pass away. So who is that that's telling you that you can't? Who is that business mogul? Who's 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 that? Who's the what's that information? What what is it to God? Those statistics. What are they? Be bold, be strong. Our boldness does not come from the certainty of tomorrow. It comes from our attitude. Rise up every morning and be bold, be strong, be a rebel, be a lion. Move out and you will see the glory of God. Thank you guys for watching and let's pray. Father, we thank you for the spirit of boldness and we thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, because you have upheld us, Lord Jesus, and because you're going to strengthen us that even when we fail, you will pick us up. Even when our feet fail, Father, you will take our hand. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Bless you guys, and uh, see you in the evening with Apostle Sarah Bunjo, and see you tomorrow with Apostle John Bunjo, continuing the series, you know, on hearing God and whatever God has put on his heart. Bless you guys, and we love you. Thank you.